Hello and welcome to Lorbeck Luxury Cars. I'm Harry and today is a very special day. Well, I guess every day is a special day at Lorbeck Luxury Cars and we're all very, very excited because today is our 200th Friday drive. Yes, 200. It's hard to believe that something that started out as a bit of an accident is now something that's copied by the likes of car sales and dealerships across the country. And for this, the 200th Friday drive, we're doing something that's fairly special and speaks to the history of Lorbeck Luxury Cars. So sit back and enjoy the 200th Friday drive. Ow! You got me in the eye! <laughs> Hello and welcome to Lorbeck Luxury Cars. I'm Harry and on this edition of the Friday Drive, we're doing something a little bit different. No, it's not a Ferrari, no, it's not a Lamborghini Diablo, and it's not even an Audi R8 Spider, but it's something that's very special to the history of Lorbeck Luxury Cars, and it's this, the Volkswagen Beetle. And to explain why the Volkswagen Beetle is so important to the history of Lorbeck Luxury Cars, we need to speak to the king himself, Mr. Shrek Lorbeck. Harry, this is going to be the best Friday drive ever. This is very, very special to me. I started my career as a motor mechanic uh, in the uh, very early 80s, and um, it was a little Volkswagen business that I bought as a mechanic, and what was it called? SOS Motors. And uh, it was a little rundown business, but the fact is that um, it was a Volkswagen service, and I really didn't know much about Volkswagens. But the fact is, I needed to learn pretty quickly, otherwise I would not have a sustainable business. And of course, over a very short period of time, I fell in love with the Beetle, and it was very exciting because I got to learn all the quirky things about it, and it was the source of my income. And so we would be, uh, I'd be servicing them, I'd be repairing them, and then slowly started to buy a few and sell a few to supplement my income. So Shreka, tell us more about this particular Beetle. Okay, so to do that, uh, let's hop in the car. Uh, I'm going to take the driver's seat. Now this is a 1500 and this particular car is very special because this one was actually built here in Melbourne in Dandenong. As a knockdown kit. Correct. Mm. And so it's it's been here basically from you and this particular car has been beautifully loved. It's been sitting in a collection uh, for many, many years and then it was sold to a gentleman who spent a fair bit of time and effort and also considerable money uh, making it again in its complete original form with a couple of uh, factory accessories of the day. But as a Volkswagen mechanic, I mean, there were special things I could do with this car. So I used to pride myself that I could actually replace a clutch kit, complete clutch assembly, including um, uh, the flywheel, the spigot bearing in 30 minutes. So four bolts, remove the engine, take it out, replace all the components, have it all back in, have the clutch adjusted and on a test drive in 30 minutes. Well, why don't you put you to the test now? Oh, well, I'm probably a little bit slower today, but uh, that would be a good exercise. In fact, I don't know if I've still got my one of my last pair of overalls around, but I'm sure they're there somewhere hanging in the back of uh, uh, the old showroom, but uh, that would be a good trick, Harry. I don't mind it. <laughs> Question two, how many of these did you buy, sell, and repair in your time? Well, that's a pretty sort of uh, a question. I'd sort of, it was a bit of a while ago, I'd have to think about it, but uh, I used to say there's probably about six or seven of these a day, and of course, VW Passats, uh, the whole variant from the Volkswagen range. And on a weekend, I used to probably sell three or four on a Saturday. And uh, in those days, there was no internet, of course, so yeah. I used to buy the age at midnight, circle the cars and the sort of phone numbers that we thought were particular areas. Then I'd send a crew, a team, uh, that went and put $50 deposit on three or four cars that they would buy, subject to testing, and then I'd test them, make sure they're right during the week. If it was fine, we'd pay for them, and I'd buy the car, re-detail them, re-clean them up, sell them, and make a little margin. And that was really to supplement the workshop. So when the workshop wasn't busy, I could prepare uh, some of the beetles and sell them. And uh, in the uh, middle 80s and uh, uh, late 80s, I was sort of the Volkswagen king and sold lots of them and really enjoyed the journey uh, of selling them. Didn't expect them to be that collectible today. And this particular example is in unbelievable, remarkable condition. And when Harry takes it for a drive, he's gonna confirm it absolutely drives fantastic and a lot of fun. Well, anyway, that's enough from me, Harry. I think it's time for you to take over the steering wheel and take it for a spin. Sounds like a plan. Well, 
the 1500cc 40 kilowatt air-cooled engine hanging out the back and a four-speed manual in the middle, you'd think that the original owner bought this at the top of a hill and then had to sell it once they got to the bottom. Being a 1970 model, there are a number of upgrades over the previous model years, including rubber bumper inserts, a passenger side vanity mirror, twin sets of louvers on the rear engine cover, twin map pockets, just to name a few high-tech upgrades. I mean, the spec sheet on this thing don't really you know, talk much to a car that's going to be at all interesting or nice to drive or has any sort of get up and go. But you'd be wrong. I mean, the Mini was, you know, the people's car of the UK, and this was the people's car for Germany. And the Mini is well known for being an excellent car to drive. But the reality is, it's actually a fun car to drive. It's sort of darty, it's, and especially when you're getting off at the, the lights and all of that, it actually get up and goes pretty well. It keeps up with bottom traffic, no problem. It really does surprise you, you know, when you're behind the wheel of what the actual power figures are, because from where I'm sitting, it doesn't feel anything like that. And this particular example is just absolutely mint. It's got every, everything's been done with it. And if you look in the engine bay, which I'm sure there'll be a bit of B-roll, which will sort of pan across it. But this thing is immaculate and it drives as good as it looks. There's absolutely no doubt about it. But you might sort of think that, oh, it's just been restored and tarted up from some rusty old bucket of a thing. But you'd be wrong because this is in fact an Australian built Beetle. Yes, I know it's surprising, but they actually built Beetles in Australia. I can't remember exactly where in Australia they did it, but it was actually very common. They built Range Rovers in Australia, they built a variety of Leylands, they even built Mercedes Benzes in Australia in the 50s. So this was sort of a common thing at the time. But the net result of that, once I get around the corner, is that this car has been obviously been in Australia all its life. And so it's a completely rust-free example. So this car is as good as it looks. Treco? Uh-huh. Oh. Well, I guess that's a good thing after all, isn't it? All right, be back soon. As is my curse, every single car I seem to touch sells. I guess that's not such a bad thing. But anyway, it's sold, so you're going to have to be quicker next time. All right, let's get back to the showroom. Oh, got to start it first. We'll see you next week. So thank you for your support for Lorbeck Luxury Cars and little old me over the years and for making the Friday Drive something that's become really special, a weekly feature that has now been viewed by millions of people around the world. And as always, we'll see you next week. So sit back and enjoy the 200th Friday Drive. It's not working. <laughs> 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 I'm going to